Hey, hello, this is Captain. So I'm going to be doing a little bit of work here on our tugboat and hopefully getting the drive systems to work a little bit. So I was kind of playing with the idea of doing this off screen and doing this on screen. So currently what the issue I have is, is there's a dead zone. And so the dead zone is essentially the way that my drives work is they're based off of the throttle on the on the helm. And so from zero up to, I believe it's 2.5 RPS. So I'm essentially telling it what RPS I want. So from zero to 2.5 RPS, it's not doing anything. Once it gets up to about 2.5 RPS, I have enough uh, RPS to create enough torque to be able to start adding in clutch. And so that will allow me to add in clutch, which will then allow the engine to mesh or the gears to mesh and then the engine to drive. And so when I bring the throttle back to negative 2.5, so it essentially just inverts or gives an absolute value to the number. When I bring back it below 2.5, it will clutch into reverse. So that's essentially a five range. So uh, negative 2.5 to positive 2.5. So there's five in there so that it's slow for me to put it in reverse, put it in forward, and especially for a vehicle where I need good maneuverability, I need to get rid of that. The other thing is, when I first built the tugboat, I kind of made it go a little bit faster than I would like. I tend to do something in the neighborhood of 20% faster. So I believe, if memory serves, I'll actually look it up so that memory doesn't have to serve. All right, so looking it up, the max speed of the tugboat that I was kind of inspired by for this is 10.9 knots. Our top goes 25 knots, so that's about, you know, in the neighborhood of 2.5 times the speed. I tend to try to go 20% faster, which would be like 12 knots. 12 seems a little low to me. Maybe 15, I'm thinking, would be kind of nice. I don't want it overly slow just because it makes it a little bit easier to get around. But as you, you know, if you go back to my gearing tutorial, you don't get anything for free. You're... You're, when you're using gear and you're trading RPS for torque, torque allows you to do more work. So think of it, I've used this analogy a bunch, is you know, if you have a skinny person with skinny little arms in a canoe and they have a paddle, they can take a really thin paddle and they can move it super fast. And that will move a certain quantity of water. Let's say each stroke moves one unit of water. So if they can do 10 strokes per second, they're using they're moving 10 units of water per second. Or you can have a big muscly person in the kayak with a paddle that's 10 times as big that can move 10 times as water, 10 times as much water per stroke. Well, guess what? They only need one stroke per second to move the same quantity of water. Um, it's a little bit different with propellers because the way speed works is because of the thread pitch or the, you know, it wouldn't be thread pitch, but it would be thread pitch on a screw, but on a uh, propeller, it would be propeller pitch. And so for every one rotation, you go a certain distance forward. And so it's not exactly that, but what I'm going to probably try to do is maybe hit about 15, 16 knots, maybe 18. So I want to bring it down. So like I was talking about with the gearing tutorial, you're trading either RPS for torque or torque for RPS. So think of it this way with the analogy. The RPS is the dude with the skinny little arms who can move very fast. So if you're trading torque for RPS, that is the arrow pointing towards the engine that's saying, hey, I'm going to trade your torque so I can move it faster. All right. And then if you have the arrow pointing away, that's saying, hey, I want to trade your rotations for more power. I want to have fewer rotations, but more powerful. That tends to allow you to move a larger propeller. The other benefit, which I have to test a little bit in game, is how does it pull? So, for example, I have a test barge that can hold 200,000 liters of water. That's pretty damn heavy. You know, if you figured 8 pounds per gallon, uh, that's actually, we'll do 2. So it's 400,000 kilograms, so you're talking 800,000 pounds, almost a million, you know, approaching a million pounds of water in the in the barge and so if I can reduce RPM and increase torque I should be able to pull more weight but at a slower speed and that's why tugboats like this one that I'm using as a reference material it only goes just under 11 knots because it is the engines are built for torque they're not built for RPS and the point is 
you know, this tugboat can approximate its 11 knot max speed, whether it's pulling something or not. If you had a boat, like a speed boat, right? That speed boat can, um, it can go very fast. But then if you try to have it tow something, it's probably going to tow it pretty slow because it's trading all of that, that RP, uh, that torque for RPS. So you don't have the torque to continually pull something. So kind of long and drawn out, but let's go ahead and jump in here and let's play with it. So first thing we'll do is we'll do this scientifically. We'll find the last one here that I have saved. It's been a little while since I worked on it. So here's tugboat. And so the first thing we should do is let's go take it for a little run. And I'll kind of show you what I mean and visualize what I want to fix and work on. All right, so here we are. And let's go fire it up. All right, so I'm going to tell you when I hit the up arrow and the W key, and that's going to be for forward. And you'll be able to see, I'm just going to turn the sounds up just a hair too. And you'll hear when, the, you'll actually see these are my RPM, these are my clutches. The clutches are currently at zero. As I get to a high enough torque that the, it's actually based on RPS, but it's torque, essentially. Uh, once I get to a, we can't read torque in game properly, but once it gets to a certain RPS, it's going to, we're going to have enough torque that it can start adding the clutch in to overcome the resistance of the water. And so I'll tell you when I press W and up air, and you'll see how long it takes me to change that, uh, how long it takes to get through the dead zone. Yep, I just screwed up and didn't tell you. Okay. <laughs> All right, so here we go. So we're back to zeroed. All right, I'm going to tell you. Now. All right, so see how it's, it's like at least a second or two hesitation? Now I'm going to go backwards. So S and down. You'll notice we're coming down. And now I'm about in the dead zone. So it's not super duper slow, but it's enough to annoy me. I also need to make sure that for some reason it's not... Um, I don't know why it's not zeroing the clutch when I go to stop and reverse. All right, so I want to get rid of that dead zone. So let's work on that first. So first thing I like to do is I recommend this highly. This is my most recent tugboat. I don't want to lose this. I don't want to screw it up. So now I'm going to go in here and it's going to be tug, drive, rework, and spell it correctly would be nice rework and that's going to just allow me to know what what am i doing in this because you know i might go a week week or so without even looking at this all right so let's look in the microcontroller um one of the azipod controls and you'll kind of see what i mean by dead zone so this is the way that i'm i'm operating my drive here and so we have the helm right here and so the helm reads uh channel 31 which should be what's that space bar i think and then we have two. Uh, two is WS. So this is port, so that's WS. Uh, if it reads one, it counts up. If it reads negative one, it counts down. And then these are all the reset conditions to reset this to zero. For example, if I'm starting, if I press the space bar, if um, a bunch of different things. And so we have our increment, how fast or slow it increases. Negative five to five, that's our RPS range. I'm only going up to five on this. And so if we look at it here, there's a couple things we could do. One thing is, if as I gear this, um, what I'm going to be doing is gearing this down so that to slow it down, to also give it more torque because it doesn't pull very well, and I'd like it to pull very well. And early when we were using this more for rescues, I needed that extra speed to be able to go do rescues effectively. Well, eventually, you know, we have the seaplane now, and also I'm going to be building a purpose-built rescue boat that's a nice fast boat and so I don't need this to be my fast rescue boat I'll use something else and so currently let's kind of look through this logic and you'll see what I mean so let me find the clutch here clutch should be right there okay so these are all the conditions for the clutch and so one of them is right here so this is what I'm telling it I want either up to a positive 5 or a negative 5. This stays positive and negative, and the reason for that is this also controls my drive system. If it's a negative, it means, hey, I want reverse. It puts it in reverse. If it's positive, it means I want forward. It leaves it in forward. Here is a clamp and an ABS. Absolute gives us always a positive number because we always want our RPS to our engines to be positive. We don't want a negative RPS on our engines. That would just shut our engines off. 
And then what we do is once the number here goes greater than uh, 2.6, that's going to start giving us clutch. All right, so I need to go from 0 to 2.6 to make this operate. And so essentially, I'm trying to get rid of this dead zone here. And so one of the things I already did here is if you look at the clamp, the bottom number is already 2.5. So that's always going to read out a 2.5 as the bottom number. That's our idle. And so what I'm going to try to do really quick here is, so there's two conditions here. So my RPS and my engines, right, they need to be greater than 2.6. That's saying, hey, I need enough torque to be able to put in clutch because you need a certain amount of RPS to maintain the uh, engine. Well, you need two RPS just to keep the engine running. And then the rest of it essentially can go to driving the system, you know, whether it be wheels or propeller or whatever. And so I need to build up enough torque before I apply the clutch or else it's going to stall my engine. That's why a lot of people, you know, talk about stalling their engine. And I also need uh, my actual desire to be greater than 2.6 so that it will start to add the clutch in. So let's see what I want to do here. So I think what I can do here is Let's see if I can get precise enough and not have this be a problem. See, the pro if I get this number too close, it's going to automatically have me drive away. So right now that's 2.5. Let's try to get that closer to 2.6. Let's try 2.58. All right. This is probably not going to completely get rid of the dead zone, especially in reverse. Reverse is going to take some time, but let's see. So that's 2.58. Um, this is on the... Port side. I'm going to try to make both sides the same. This should hopefully help with testing. So let's make this a 2.58. Alright. Update that and let's spawn it in. And so you saw how it took about a second and a half for me to go forward. Let's see if I can if this will allow me to go a little bit quicker here. So I essentially wanted to be able to get my engines up and running a little bit faster. So essentially, I'm running at a higher idle. And so let's go ahead and I'll tell you when. Now. So yeah, it definitely seemed like a little bit faster. We'll do it again. So see, when I press the space bar going forward, it doesn't stall out. I'm curious if that's a game thing. I have to try to look through it. All right, I want it, I want the propellers to completely stop. That's going to because if they're already turning, they already have momentum. They're not fighting the resistance as much, so I want to stop them and then that way they have to start from scratch. Okay, good. So I'll tell you again now. All right, I'm going to start going back on starboard. See, I don't know why it's stalling in reverse. Okay, so this drive system is not too bad now. I think that's a little bit better. Let me go forward on starboard. We'll go straight ahead again. Yeah, so see, I have pretty good um, controllability with it now. See, like, we're able to go 25 knots. That's not going to happen anymore. So that's good. So that, that did uh, make the dead zone a little bit less of a problem. All right, good. So that's kind of a step in the right direction. All right, next thing I want to do is we're going to work with gearing here. And so, like I was saying before, you know, with a screw, let me bring up a diagram. All right, so here's the screw diagram I always use. And so, as you can see, you have the pitch of the threads of the screw, same as the propeller pitch. This is why, you know, in aircraft and game, we can change the pitch of the propeller so we can theoretically. Our best speed would be at 100% prop pitch, uh, but often it isn't because we're increasing the load, but whatever. So the um, for every one rotation, we go a certain distance forward. So for every one rotation of the screw, you would go a certain distance into the wood, and the same thing happens with water. Um, for every one rotation of our water propeller, we'll go a certain distance forward. So by having the arrow pointing towards the engine, we're increasing the RPS, which is causing us to go, you know, more 
more rotations more quickly, which is causing us to go that distance. So for, for example, let's say our propellers. For every one RPS, we go, oh, I don't know, one meter per second forward. Well, if we're going 10 RPS, we go 10 meters per second, 20, 20 meters per second. And so that kind of tells you where you're at with that. And so I'm going to start doing what's antithetical to most people in Stormworks, which is slowing down. I want more power out of this. And so as you convert your torque of the engine to RPS, you're making your vehicle less strong. Again, you're becoming more like the guy in the canoe who has the thin arms who can move that paddle super fast, the tiny paddle, but and less like the, the big guy with the one big paddle that can move it you know, at, the, at a slower rate. So what I want to do is I want to slow down. I want to make it more like the strong guy because the whole point of the tugboat is to tow. And so I need to decrease the, um, I need to decrease my gearing. And so as you can see, we have, uh, I have two gearboxes facing my engines and I have two more here. So I have three total. These are just reversers. All right. Now, the other thing is if I can take out a line, we're going to be in good shape. So I want to do this. So right now we're three, one, six five so really simple math it's um three times three times six is 18 divided by five all right that's a 3.6 to one gear ratio so let's do this instead what we can probably do here and this will actually save us a little bit of energy too is let's go symmetry on let's delete this out let's put a piece of pipe in there all right and now we've decreased our gear ratio from a 3.6 to 1 to a 3 to 1 and so everything still should work because these are our reversers now we have also I'm not still not 100% sure it's still in game but for every gearbox you add I think you're uh, losing a little bit of power I'm not sure if it's actually still like that or not I haven't got any conclusive answers but now that should slow our boat down. So we're going like a max speed of 25 before. You saw we hit 22 when I was doing that last test. So as we decrease our gear ratio, we're increasing our torque, essentially. And more of that torque can go to the propellers. Well, when I'm pulling, when I'm just, when I'm moving the boat by itself, it does 25. Yeah, it seems great. But then if I was to pull a heavy weight, it would move much, um, much, much slower. It can't do it. So, like, see, now we're limited down to about 19 knots. That's where I want to be. All right, so we're now, we're not insanely slower. We, you know, we're about six knots slower. But we should be able to tow better. So let's go ahead and let's try this now. So we'll do a practical test here. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to save this. So here is tug drive rework. Save that. Okay, next thing I want to do. I'm going to grab the old tug, that uh, tug systems. That was the one before I did any of these changes. This is tug systems. And we try to do a reasonably scientific test here. Let's fire up. I'm just going to pull ahead. I'm going to drop a barge in with a bunch of water. And we're going to tow it. Oh, actually, grab the helmet help. Now this this tugboat is still about 50% faster than the tug that it's based off of. So you see we're getting up, we'll get up eventually get up to 25 knots there. So this is the old one. This one's faster, but it's not it should not be able to be it should not be able to pull as much weight. It will actually stall our engines. And it's it's passing less torque through, so we should not be able to pull that much. Alright, so here we are. There's a big barge here. Where's my... I need to make sure I have a spawner here. I think I do. All right, so this is full of seawater. I believe this is somewhere in the neighborhood of 200,000 liters of water. So about 400,000 kilograms. Yep, so 208,000 liters of water. So this is nice and heavy. And so I'm just going to do kind of like a drag test. I'm going to go straight straight back um, straight forward with it once I hook it up and we'll see how we'll see what I can pull with it I'm just gonna go third person make it a little bit easier and I'm gonna stall it in reverse I need to figure out why it's stalling in reverse something's up it, it does that a lot sometimes it just stalls in reverse all right and we're gonna try to do this so what's what's my rope length six meters okay so i'm going to gently start pulling it because i want to take up the slack first 
In game, we have bungee cords. So I want to take up the slack. The other thing I want to do is, so we have a heading of 130. Let's put heading hold on. I don't want to steer any. I want it to steer itself. So this will maintain us on that heading of 130. All right. N now notice, th watch the RPM. And, and look at our clutch. We do not have the enough torque to be able to pull this barge. All right. Notice, see how they keep dying? That's because we don't have enough torque to pull this barge. See how it's like pulling it and then it's stopping? We don't have the torque to pull this, and that's the whole point of the tugboat is to be able to pull that mass. All right, so let's go ahead and I'm going to grab this out. So you notice, uh, let's get a speed here. It's not going to matter. We can't maintain it. So see, like we go up to like four knots. But we can't maintain it because we're actually, st uh, you know, we're not stalling our engines out. Our clutches will automatically reduce so that we don't stall. But we would stall if the clutches didn't do that. And so that's not going to work for us for towing. So by gearing down, that should allow me to be able to tow more weight. So here's the rework. Now, whether this completely works perfectly in game or not is to be seen, but... In theory, this should help. So That is a lot of mass for this, but this is about what I want this tug to be able to pull. And I'm still willing to decrease the speed down to, I'd say, 15 knots to be able to increase the... to be able to increase the torque so that I can pull heavy weight. Because, again, it's a tugboat. It's supposed to be pulling heavy weight. So this is the new one. As you can see, we're capping out around 19 knots. That's actually not stalling as bad either now. Alright. I restalled it on that one. Alright, so here's my rope. Let's hook it. So. Uh, so I'm just trying to get it close to where it was. That's pretty close to where it was. Just trying to keep all the variables the same. Let's enter in 130 here. Put the heading hold on. All right, now I'm ready to start gently pushing forward. I'm just going to start gentle. And so we could not pull this weight at all with the other tug. So I'm going to gently start pulling up. It was stalling my engines. And as you can see, we can actually tow faster with this boat by just dropping the gear ratios. There we go. So notice, you notice how this hasn't tried to stall itself once? Look at the clutch. 100% clutch. Now, in real life, you wouldn't want a clutch slipping. And the reason you wouldn't want a clutch slipping is there's an abrasive material in the clutch. Think of it like two pieces of sandpaper. All right. You have two pieces of sandpaper. Take two belt sanders. Put them together. Turn them on. What's going to happen? You're going to—they're going to eat each other up, and there's going to be just paper there, and there's going to be no grit on the sandpaper anymore. Same thing with clutch plates. Clutch plates have a bunch of abrasive material. If now take the two pieces of sandpaper, push them together hard, and now try to just slide them. What's going to happen? They're going to slide together, right? So you don't want slipping. Slipping destroys clutch plates. So in real life. If you actually, you know, had your clutch plate slipping, they would be destroyed. It would be nice if that was an option in game to have destroyable clutch plates. So if they're if they're slipping all the time, they'll need to be repaired. Um, but you know, you want full clutch application like this. So now, notice we get a good speed of seven knots. I'm able to tow this barge now at seven knots, which is reasonable. The tug goes to 19 knots, which is uh, reasonable. We can still get places pretty fast, not as fast as before, but it's not insane anymore. And we can tow a nice 2,000, you know, 200,000 liters of water, which could be oil or whatever, seeing the oil updates coming out. So this is much better. This brings up the usability of the tugboat. So now this tugboat is less of a jack of all. Remember, I was talking before about how this ep this um, career build series, I don't want jack of all trade, master of none ships. I want masters of their field. And so. This tugboat is now a proper tugboat. Now, 
if I slowed the speed down even more, what would probably happen, let's say I slowed, I decreased the gear ratio even more. Let's say I made the top speed of the tugboat, say, 10 knots, okay? If I made the, the speed of the top speed 10 knots, I might be able to tow at 10 knots because it doesn't matter if I'm pulling something or not pulling something. The tugboat is powerful enough to do that. The, the resistance is going to be low enough will do it. But I think this works well. This is going to allow me... So, like, for example, say I was going to be towing all the time, it would behoove me to reduce the gear ratio even more to increase the tow speed. So, theoretically, I'd go from, let's say... Let's actually do it a little bit. So, right now, we're getting 7. So, we go 19... 19 unladen, unladen meaning that we don't have, we're not towing anything, and we have seven knots laden with this, with this barge. All right, so let's do this. Let's go down, we'll just, we'll overdo it a little bit. Let's go down two. So there's a two to one gear ratio. All right, so there's a two to one gear ratio. So we've decreased the ratio even more. So our top speed should be even lower than 19, but our towing speed, as long as we can go over seven knots, should be faster than seven knots. Theoretically, it depends. As long as we get a, a max speed over, perfect. So there's ten knots. That's what our, um, if we remember last time, that, or if we remember, you know, the reference material, that is the top speed of the tugboat that was the reference material. It's ten knots. So it's lumbering. Think of it as a truck, right? A truck when I was driving my tractor trailer, right, if I have no load, I have no trailer in the back of me, right, I can go, I could go, you know, 65 knots, or 65 knots, 65 miles an hour if I had no trailer. If I put on a heavy trailer, guess what? Still go 65 because it's, it has a low enough gear ratio that I could do that. Now, I can't go faster than 65 when part, part, most of that's the governor, but... Uh, because it's geared to be a truck, you can go there. Now, think of a car, right? You have a car that can go 150 miles an hour, right? Now, try to take the same trailer that I could pull, that I would pull with the tractor, and try to pull it with that car. Well, it might not be able to go at all. It'd probably burn up the clutch doing it, because the clutch isn't robust enough. It's not geared low enough. It just never will be able to do it, even though it might have the same horsepower numbers. For example, my brother's car has more horsepower than my tractor did at work, and there's no way he's going to pull it because, guess what? It's not geared properly, and it, it doesn't have low enough... It doesn't have enough torque, even though the torque numbers are, are high enough. It also doesn't have enough contact patch with the tires on the ground, and it also doesn't have a robust enough clutch because, think of it this way... If the car weighs, oh, I don't know, let's let's make up, a, a, say, um, 2,000 kilograms, you know, 4,000 pound car, the clutch plates only have to be strong enough to be able to pass that torque through the clutch and then move 4,000 pounds. Now you have a truck that's going to weigh 80,000 pounds. Well, the clutch needs to put all that torque through the clutch and then pull on 80,000 pounds. You think of it this way, it's like, you know, the car could pull something with a piece of dental floss and not break it. The truck needs a big, heavy chain to be able to pull it without breaking it because the weight is much higher, right? So now we're only doing 10 knots. 10 knots is too slow for me, so I went down to a 2 to 1. I'd probably go between a 2 to 1 and a 3 to 1. So a 5 to 2 ratio, which one is a 5 to 2? 5. Uh, that's a 2.5 to 1 gear ratio. So I'm thinking a 2.5 is probably going to be what we want. It's a good balance. So as I can say, max speed is 10. Potentially, you know, it depends on how the game operates here, but we should probably be able to get a speed better than 7, which was our tow speed. Um, now, let's say we can't get a speed better than 7. Let's say we still get 7. Well, guess what? We could probably pull more weight, though. And so we could pull a bigger barge. And so, like, if you look at some of the, like, the tugboat, um, like, pictures of what these tugboats are doing, you see a boat that doesn't look that big, but is hauling an enormous barge. Well, that's because they're geared properly, and they tend to have pretty big um, propellers on them. Right, let's see, I don't want to get wet in the drinky here. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Very close to being able to get this hooked here. There we go. All right, so I'm just going to, I don't know if how much rope length is really uh, mattering, but... We're going to do that. Do it anyway to make sure. Just try to keep as many variables the same as you can. 
All right, so there's 130. AP Master's on. Let's straighten out. Oh, that's it. It's trying to steer me. So let's just gently tap these up. It's going to steer to 130. I'm just doing the same heading. Okay, let's go forward. All right, so now as you see, the speed is slower. And so the reason the speed is slower is because we're capped out on RPS. The propellers can't go any faster. So I probably undergeared this too much. But what we'll be able to do is we could we could carry even more weight. See how it's effortlessly pulling this weight? Now it's slower than our last speed. Uh, the last time when we were going seven knots towing, that means that we could um, let's say let's say we could we could tow up to four hundred thousand liters with that boat that can go seven knots. Well, this one we might be able to tow up to eight hundred thousand liters because it has more torque. So what I want to do here is we'll do one final test, and I think this will be all set. So I think I found a good intermediary position. Like I said, 15 knots is about as slow as I want to go. So let's go to 5 to 2. So a 5 to 2 is 5 divided by 2. That's a um, 2.5 to 1 gear ratio. So now this is running at a 2.5 to 1 gear ratio. Well, guess what? I can uh, Actually, no, I don't want to. I was going to say I could go down another gearbox. The issue is I want symmetrical forward and reverse. So I want to make sure that I can go 5-2 in both forward and reverse. So I need dual gearboxes here anyway. So now we're at 5-2, 5-2. And so that's going to give us half. It's going to give us one half rotation per RPS of the engine on the propeller. Uh, more than the last run. So we should be faster than the last run. We shouldn't. We should probably have a better pull speed. Uh, maybe greater than 7. Maybe around 7. But we should also be able to pull more. I'm trying to think of the best way to put this so it's not confusing. We should be able to pull more weight than the original uh, and less weight than the one we just tested last. Let's put it that way. So this is a good intermediate. Look at that. Perfect. 14 is a good speed. I'm happy with that. That's, that's a full 11 knots slower than the tugboat before we even started this change. Uh, so this is going to make it so that going long distances is going to take us longer. But, again, like I was saying, let's say you take your super fast speedboat and you try to pull a big, huge mass with it. Well, guess what? It's not going to be able to do it well. If you remember back to Vrijo from the, from the um, 2022 career build series, Vrijo could tow a barge, but only at like three knots. And it couldn't tow this big of a barge. No way. And so Vrijo was nice and fast. It could go to rescues at a nice fast clip, but it was not geared properly to be able to tow something like a barge. It wasn't designed for that. This is designed for it. So this will go a maximum speed of, say, 14 knots, but it can tow a lot faster. The other barge, or the other tugboat, remember when we first started this tugboat before, before I made any changes, that one could tow. It couldn't even tow it, right? It kept stalling out the engines, or um, it had to declutch. And so that could do, it couldn't even do four knots. Well, guess what? This one is going to take longer to get to get there, but when it's towing a barge, it's going to go more than double the speed while towing. And so this could actually be ec more economical and faster than having a... Um, a boat that can go out there at 25. Let's say, let's say you're covering one kilometer, or let's say you're covering 25 kilometers, and you're going out there at 25 kilometers an hour. Well, it's gonna take an hour to get out there, right? With this one, it's I'm going 15. It's gonna take me a longer time to get out there. But as long as my tow speed is reasonable coming back, I might actually be faster in this one, or even the same speed, because my tow speed and my regular speed are more in line with one another. So I think this is going to be the, the key here. Let's check it. Now, the way that things work in game are not always identical to IRL. So, like, theoretically, we might, you know, have a speed that's still slower. But that's because, you know, the game's not 100% perfect on how it um, calculates all this stuff. But we shall see. Oh, oh. Um, what, why am I steering funky here? All right, so I'm going to do, let's do a little bit of a maneuvering. Here, so I'm going to go forward on my port and reverse on my starboard. We'll rotate. All right. And then I need to go as a pod in. We'll just tap back the port. All 
What is going on here? I don't know why it's doing that. I, I pressed the two key which centers up my azipod, and it's just not centering it very fast, and it's that's why it was had me keep going in that direction. I'm trying to stay dry here. Oh, it's not gonna work. Okay. So we're gonna do the same test, keep it around six point seven meters of cable length. Alright, it's good. It's actually exactly where the last one was. Alright, we'll put a heading hold in. That's just going to hold the heading because as the other pod slides back and forth, I'm going to have less power. So by putting a heading hold on, it's going to eventually, once we're going 130, it's not going to be wasting any energy. It's going to be going where it needs to go. Alright, so we're straight. Let's go ahead and let's pull, go full power. Alright, now look at that speed. Alright, remember the intermediary one, right? Uh, the first one we did, the first change we made, it was towing at 7 knots, right? It would go 19 knots, but it would tow at 7 knots. We're now towing faster. We're towing at 9. The really strong one was towing at 6, so that means we could tow a larger barge. This one here is, I think, a great mix. It gives me a reasonable speed of uh, 14 knots to get out to places, and then I can tow at 9 knots. So the more torque you're producing, the closer those numbers are going to be. Theoretically, let's say I, I made the max speed of this 10 knots, and it was completely symmetrical. That means I would, get, it would, take, I would go out at 10 knots, and then I would also tow at 10 knots. And that's kind of what a tugboat does. It'll, you'll still slow down a little bit. But as you can see now, the one that was fast that would go 25 knots, because the torque was so low, I couldn't even maintain 3 knots of tow speed. This one, I've sacrificed about 10 knots of overall speed for the ability to tow well. So this is now a tugboat for real. Before, it was a fake tugboat that was essentially a rescue boat in, in a tugboat disguise. This is an actual tugboat now. And to make it a real tugboat, let's go ahead and we'll put on our tow lights. So now our tow lights are on. So this is going to... So I wanted to do this for a little while now. This is going to allow me to be able to actually utilize this as it's supposed to be as a tugboat and pull large barges, which is going to allow us to do fuel trading. We have the oil update coming, the major update. Again, major update does not mean DLC. Major update means major update. Minor update means minor update. DLC means DLC. I still see a lot of people getting confused with that. And so with the new oil update, I wanted to make sure this tugboat was up to scratch that it would be able to tow things like this. And this is also, the tugboat's going to be a little less jumpy now that the speed range is smaller. And so I've essentially just converted my uh, torque for RP, uh, my RPS for torque. Now let's look at this. So we're at 294. I just want to look at our RPS here. So 294 divided by 6, oh, not 600. 294 divided by 60. That's 4.9, so we're at max. So we actually have more power in our engines. Um, I'm, I'm purposefully limiting them. With this gear ratio, I theoretically could increase my maximum RPS in the engine and go both pull, pull better and go faster. I don't want to. I'm happy with this. So like the next thing I could do is leave this gear ratio if I wanted and go up to six RPS. I don't want to do that. I don't want to go any faster. I'm happy with this tow speed. A 10 knot tow speed is is more than enough for me. The distances are actually pretty short in game, so let's like, let's go, let's look at that waypoint. So that is 27 kilometers. So let's say uh, 27, actually I know, <laughs> that's three. That'd take us three hours to get there. No, it wouldn't, because that's kilometers and that's knots. Let's, I forget kilometer to, uh, to uh, nautical mile. So let's see, uh, it's about half. It's, it's 0.53, so let's see, that's 27.5 kilometers. That's 14 nautical miles. That's going to take us, what's that, hour and a half, something like that? Yeah, about an hour and a half. Maybe a little, yeah, a little less than two hours to get there. Now that sounds, oh my god, that's terrible. That's going to be forever. This is, again, this has an autopilot on it. The whole point, and we're going from up here, right? So we wouldn't be doing that. So likely what we do for an actual mission here is probably to start with, I would buy diesel. So buy diesel for 35 cents here. 
Now, we can't afford this anyways, so we can't afford it with this barge anyway, but we'd buy diesel there and we'd sell it here. So it's 35 cents to buy, so let's just run the numbers really quick. So uh, that would be 0 0.65, 0 0.65. We're not going to worry about the last decimal place. And this is 0.35, so 0.65 minus 0.35, it's easy, 0.3 times, I'm just going to round, 200,000 liters. So that would be 60 grand if I could buy it. So if we filled that barge that I'm currently towing with, with uh, diesel and we took it from here to here, which is a short distance, that's, that's probably, I don't know, maybe 35 minutes at most to get there. Pump time is going to take a while to pump it out, but I don't really care. Again, this is AFK type of work for me. I plug it in, start the pumps, and I go do stuff around the house, or I go run errands, or do what else I was going to do, hang out, you know, watch TV, watch some YouTubes of my favorite YouTubers, you know. Um, I hope you do as well. And, um, you know, and so that's that's a good moneymaker route. You know, you want to make extreme money, you would take jet fuel and take it up here. Uh, oil is going to be, right, the new oil update's out. I wanted to get this going. You probably saw that uh, yesterday's video was working on the oil tanker. We have the, you know, I still have the Build Challenge Charlie going, the oil tanker, um, coincidence, hey? And then I worked on, you know, I, I showed the video of me updating my tanker. But, like, here is more likely what I'll be doing is, so that's 0.77 right there. That's oil. And going here, so that's a shorter distance. That's not going to take two hours. Let's say 45 minutes. Maybe, an, let's say an hour, hour 15 to go there. And that's oil to here, so we'd fill with oil. And oil is 77. What's well, oil sell for? 286, so 2.86 minus 0.77. That's uh, $2 per uh, liter. We're talking 200,000 liters. We're talking over $400,000 on that run. So that's all the money we need. We can print money. Um, and then think about the new game mechanic, right? We're going to have to actually refine our own fuel, which I'm thrilled with. Like, I understand a lot of people who are... They don't they don't enjoy this part of the game. You know, I've seen a thousand screeds of people like, it's supposed to be a rescue game. Dude, I get it. I get you wanted a rescue game, you bought a rescue game, and the game does other things, but I also consider that gatekeeping. Listen... This game, at its heart, what this game does best, better than most games is that it is a building game, a phen phenomenal building game. And they are expanding on the things to do with building. And so you can't both say, I'm bored, there's not enough to do, and then when they add something to do, you say, well, it's not, it's not the thing I want. There are other people, there are things that other people want, and the devs are doing a reasonable job of putting in other things. And so one of the things I'm actually kind of excited about is that we're going to have to refine our own fuels. Now, it's not out yet for me, so it won't be out when I release this video either. But it's not out yet, so we don't know. But the thought is that we're going to have to refine our own fuels. So, for example, what you would do is you could take this barge of oil. You bring it over here. You refine it into, say, diesel. Right? We, we're using diesel. We take that barge of diesel, and we take it up here, and we sell 95% of it. Right, so what would 95%? So it'd be, let's see, 200,000, um, where are we at, multiply times, point nine five. So that's 190,000 liters. That would leave us with 10,000 liters of diesel. Well, guess what? We take that 10,000 liters of diesel that I've reserved, that I've saved, we bring it back to our base, we put it in here, we now have 10,000 liters of diesel sitting in our base, plus all that profit. Uh, the other thing we have to consider is, what are some of my upfront costs? So, like, I have about, what do I have? I have, like, 68000 cash that I could potentially use for, for trading at the moment. So, I don't need a barge this big because, let's see. Actually, I could probably afford this. Um, let's see. So, this barge holds 200,000 uh, liters. And then we can buy diesel for 0.35. 70 grand. So I could almost fill this barge. I could fill, say, 80% of this barge comfortably and still feel like I have enough cash. I could fill this barge up with $80,000 worth of oil and probably fill 80% of its capacity and do this run and make good money, really good money um, on diesel. You know, and, you know, that would be worth it. Oil, I could make even more. Let's see what oil is. So oil is 77. So let's see. So let's say I have 68,000. So 
Uh, 68. Uh, thousand times point seven seven. That's gonna let me take. Is that correct? No. I'm trying to let me think. Let me just think of the math really quick in my head. Yeah, so it'd be sixty-eight thousand um, divided by point seven seven. So I can take eighty-eight thousand liters of oil. All right, so I can take 88,000 liters of oil. So let's see, what's the final? I just want to get these accurate. So, so we, we sell oil here for... Where the hell is the oil? Oil is 286, so it would be uh, 2.86 minus 0.77. So $2, and so that's $160,000. So I can do an oil run here and make $166,000. So that's good. that's good cash right now. You know, we're, you know, what, what are you, on episode 32 of the Career Build series? And I could start in one run making 200000 now at the time investment. But if you really say I'm really ambitious, I want to, and I am, I want to bring in the new home ship. I want to be able to do all the oil stuff when that comes out. I want to be able to buy this island, right? That's 100000 So it sounds like, oh, my God, 186000 or you know, whatever I said it was, um, yeah, 160,000. 160,000, that's so much money. Well, this island here that I want to buy is 100 grand. So there goes most of that money. And then it keeps me with 60 grand. Remember, I need to keep a good stock of money in my bank to be able to buy fuel and oil and all that. Um, and so I can buy this island, but I'm not going to have the money to build anything on it, right? I could, right, we were talking about maybe buying this beginner base a couple episodes ago. That's 30 grand, right? So that leaves about 130 grand. And so that starts to get our goals met. And so that allows me to do things like get that new home ship in game. And so this is, um, you know, I saw a post this morning. I, I keep reading the weekly update screeds from people who are upset. You know, I tend to find the people who are most disgruntled are in, are in there. People who are having the best time or tend to be in the discords because they're actually playing the game. They're enjoying it. It's the game for them. I think a lot of people have buyer's remorse, and so they get a little bit annoyed. And that's understandable. You know, I've done it myself with games I haven't enjoyed. Uh, but, um, you know, part of the thing is you need to come up with your own goals, your own ambitions in game in order to stay engaged and enjoy it. And this is a work simulator. And so the same, same thing that helps you motivate you to go to work in real life, let's say, for example, I want a new motorcycle. Okay, well, I need... In order to buy a new motorcycle and still pay all the bills, you say, "Okay, well, you know what? This holiday is coming up. I'm going to work this holiday." Or, as a you know, I used to do this a lot as as a way to keep motivating myself. I worked a lot of hours at work. In order to keep myself motivated, I would say, "You know what? I'm going to get a new motorcycle this spring." And so, that would be your goal in your mind the whole time. And so you go work, and it's a long day, and it would be easier for you to say, "Oh, I'm working too hard." You say, "You know what? I'm going to get that new motorcycle this spring." And the same thing in game. Guess what? My dream goal is that home ship. So I go and I, I say, okay, it's going to be a long mission to go do an oil run. Well, my goal is the, home, the new home ship. So I have a goal in mind, and so I think a lot of people who are getting bored or don't see any direction or they'll say, no, there's no, place, there's no reason to play career. There's no objectives. There are. Make them yourself. You know what? It, you know, you know you best. And so you can write a better mission in your mind than the devs can write because they don't know you. They don't know what you like. They don't know what your goals are. They don't know what your ambitions are. That's one of the reasons why I like these single-player games better or these uh, games that I have to create my own narrative better. You know, I talked about this before. Make your own narrative because guess what? Nobody knows you better than you. And so I know what I want, and so I can write my own narrative. And so guess what I want? I want the home ship. I couldn't care less about some narrative the devs wrote. I'm going to write my own narrative. I want a home ship. I want this island here. I want to build a cool base on this and make this our home. And so because I know that, well, I need a bunch of money. So guess what? At some point, I'm going to say, that's my goal. I need to accomplish my goal. I need to do some work. So, for example, I need to spawn the tugboat, and I need to spawn the barge here. I need to take them up to oil. I need to fill it with oil. That might take... I don't know, maybe 30 minutes to fill. And then I need to trek all the way across under the big bridge down here, and I need to sell that oil. That oil is going to make me a good bit of money. 
Then I'll probably fill up the barge with, say, oh, I don't know, uh, 15,000 liters of diesel. And then I want to come back up through the bridge, back down to our home, and I want to despawn everything. Well, guess what? We made a bunch of money, and now we have an extra 15,000 liters of diesel sitting in our bench. And so that gives me a really cool goal to do, and that motivates me, and it keeps me not bored. So when people are having problems being bored, I would highly recommend to you, come up with some goals. Create some stories in your head, man. Put yourself in a first-person perspective. Do some RP. A little bit of RP, right? This is my tugboat. I work for, you know, I own it. It's my business. And I want to build a cool home island that's going to have all sorts of cool features. Well, I need to buy the island. That's 100 k I need to be able to uh, build the home base. That's going to be, say, another 50, 60, 70, 100 k um, I need to be able to launch that home ship. That's easily going to be 150 k So I need to go do some work for it. And I need to earn it. And so that's how I stay motivated. That's how I really start how I stay enjoying the gameplay where I think a lot of people get bored and they wonder how can you play so much career it's so boring it isn't boring it's you need to come up with your objectives so come up with some solutions to not be bored um, you know I understand when people are not happen you know when when the game is not giving them enough narrative well the solution is this one you can complain the game is not giving me enough narrative or two create your own narrative and I suggest you try it because guess what? The narratives are always going to be what you want because you're creating your own story. You're, it's the difference between watching a movie and playing a game. If you play a game, you're the hero and you can create whatever narrative you want. So I highly recommend that. Create your own narratives. That will make the gameplay more rewarding for you. It will make it more fun for you. And I think you'll have a better time. So I'm really looking forward to the oil update. As you can see, I'm doing a bunch of stuff here, trying to get ready for it myself. I hope you guys are looking forward to it. Uh, Build Challenge Charlie is going to be uh, going until March 18th at 20 at um, zero Zulu, or no, zero Eastern time, which is um, the morning of March 18th. So that will give me the weekend to kind of go through them. Hopefully you guys are enjoying that and participating, and I will see you in the next one.